okay, the reviews are in on Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. And all I can say is, I told you so. Why do I say I told you so? Because a couple of months ago on my blog, I said that this film was going to be terrible. And I knew it was going to be terrible because what I saw in the trailer was some of the worst cinematography, some of the worst acting, some of the worst storytelling ever known to the superhero film genre. Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill in the trailer were acting like cardboard cutouts with cell phones taped to them. And the film tries to use computer-generated graphics to overcompensate for its lack of story and lack of character development. I don't know who that was in Batman v Superman, but it wasn't Lex Luthor, it wasn't Batman, and it wasn't any Superman that I knew in any of the comics that I read. What I saw in that trailer was complete garbage, and the critics pretty much said, again, pretty much everything that I said regarding this film. Sadly, there are a lot of people who went out to go see this film, but I don't think they're going to be coming back next week after experiencing what they're experiencing. And when I look at this film, it pretty much shows me that DC Comics cinematically has not learned anything since the failure of Catwoman in 2004, and they're still trying to follow an archaic model for superhero films that was out of date back in 1997 when Batman and Robin was a critical disaster. They have not learned a single thing in almost 20 years, and they're still trying to apply the old models from the, Bat the Schumacher Batman era to 2016, where things have evolved in the superhero film genre. And that evolution started, again, way back in 2002 with Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man. So in 2002, five years after your Batman and Robin, the entire game had changed. And then in 2008, when Iron Man laid out the serial um, superhero movie model, it changed yet again. But Time Warner, or Warner Brothers, has been playing catch-up for the last 20 years. They've been trying to catch up with this Marvel Cinematic Universe and trying to catch up with the overall new world of superhero movies. Um, and in time, they have shown that they have, they're not ready for prime time. This Batman v Superman pretty much showed the world that Warner Brothers is pretty much, they're out of the game at this point. Even if they make a Justice League movie, even if they make any of these superhero movies, you're starting out out of the gate stumbling, and the quality isn't improving. The quality has actually gotten worse. Your Man of Steel was pretty much mediocre out of the gate. Your Green Lantern was pretty much absolutely terrible. And this movie is, is terrible. It's like a consistent stream of bad movies. And I like DC Comics. I like DC superheroes. But when I look at their cinematic model, it's just not going to work. It's still rooted in approaches that are archaic and out of date. I mean, the audience has changed dramatically over the last 20 years. We're in the middle of one of the biggest baby booms, yet we have Warner Brothers taking two of the biggest icons in American history for superheroes, Superman and Batman, and instead of putting them in a family-friendly PG-13 movie, they decide to put these two iconic characters in a hard, gritty, almost borderline R-rated movie, chock full of violence, chock full of gore and death, and try to sell that to an audience that has been clamoring family entertainment, I'd say, for the last 16 years. If you look at all the box office hits over the last 15, 16 years, um, from your 2002 Spider-Man to your um, well, uh, Iron Man's, your Incredibles, your Pixar movies, all family-friendly. And you would think Warner Brothers would take the time to actually go out and make a family-friendly Batman-Superman movie. No, they go out and make 
a violent, graphic, gory movie. And they wonder why people look at their brand and say, nobody knows what they're doing. And this film pretty much tells the world that when it comes down to DC Comics properties, Warner Brothers just doesn't have a clue regarding how to make a great superhero movie. Now, there are some comic fans out there who will say, well, they shouldn't make superhero movies for children. Well, when we look at the box office for your Avengers, your Star Wars, and many of these other properties from Pixar, which are made for children, there's a reason why they make them for children, because that's how you make your money. That's how you sell your merchandise. Who's going out here buying the action figures? Who's going out here buying the backpacks? Who's going out here buying the children's books? Children. And who's going to continue repeat buying these products? Children, because they're going to grow up with the product. And the reason why you want to create a great film for children is because children are a big money business. But Warner Brothers thinks the over 30 crowd or the over 40 crowd or whoever, I don't know who's going to go, who would like this Batman v Superman movie, um, is going to bring the money. And I don't think that's going to happen, especially when you have a $400 million budget and you're going to need to make $1.2 billion just to make this film break even. If anything, your Batman v Superman is pretty much the Cleopatra of superhero movies. And, you know, this film pretty much makes a statement for, you know, curbing director excess and creator excess, the kind of excess that pretty much ruined the comic book market back in the 90s. And this is a film that pretty much makes a powerful statement for curbing those excesses because I look at this film and I look at the bad reviews it got and all I can say again is I told you so.